Hey everybody, welcome back into Roosters on Olentangy River Road in beautiful Columbus, Ohio. Spring is finally here. Oh my gosh, what a beautiful day outside. The Buckeyes are back from spring break. They're going to be on the practice field on Tuesday morning again. We're going to talk about that a lot on Letterman Live. It's brought to you by Roosters. That's Jay-Z, Justin Zwick, Bobby Carpenter, the lead singer of Sum 41, Jeremy Birmingham, and I am Austin Ward. Everyone likes to make fun of my clothes, and look at what this guy's wearing. Can we... The sums? Can we talk about this? Like, is it 2001 over here? Yeah, love it. I love it. I left my beanie hat in the car. The long sleeve un- under the t-shirt? I have mean, a hack- bold move. The hacky sack in your pocket? He's not even wearing an undershirt. <laughs> of course not. He's Bobby Carpenter. Done. Nice I, I gave up. We're lucky that. he has a shirt on. It's just one, know, it's, it's so, <laughs> We should be outside on the patio today. That's my... Don't deflect. You Then you'd be uncomfortable because you have... You, no one can see your shorts. So you're, they can always see my shorts. People with shorts on in here today. I will, I will say That's that. That's fine. I'm not talking about wearing shorts. I'm talking about these shorts. <laughs> They're talking about these. They're just it's bizarre. They just look like some nice. They're golf bizarre. Shorts. He played golf in college. What do you? Okay, he's so rattled because so, I fl- I jumped us off the rails. Yeah, you can. And he doesn't. Know, he doesn't know how to defend. He came this. out like a spider <laughs> monkey. All right. <laughs> if there's anything I learned from Happy Gilmore, golf requires goofy pants and a huge ass. Yeah. Okay. I mean, so Austin's Great got goofy golf. pants. Well, trying to get Talk rid of to my neighbor down the street. <laughs> <laughs> Shouldn't have been standing there. Uh, the other thing that's going on in spring is that Ohio State's basketball season is over. Does anybody have anything? They want to add post profound. I don't have anything different to say, and everyone seems to be sick of hearing me say it. But post mortem expectations. Yeah, I so I mean, I mean, you can't, I, what do you what do you think? Back. The problem now is that Michigan has been in five straight Sweet Sixteens, and Chris Holtman's been oh. in zero. And I think it, we've already said they don't have to win national championships. All right, so that that standard has changed. But you have to at least be competitive with your rival, and that's not the case. I just I'm throwing up my hands. I, too many I have nothing resources. else to say. There's on too it. many resources. There's too much talent in the Midwest in basketball for Ohio State to not be a regular Sweet 16 finalist. It, that, that is that should be a top 15 program in the country every year. That should be the expectation. Let's look at it this way. Number one, few people expected them to ultimately beat Chicago Loyola. I mean, they were underdogs. Yeah. They were getting points. Sister Jean. He's got it right where he wants reason. it. The low bar. Hey, <laughs> set it low. <laughs> People are going to be happy if we win this that's first right. this first round game. Well, that's, didn't we talk about like, hey, my goal, my thing, my goal was win the first game. I didn't think they'd beat Nova. Be competitive in the second. Right. And, you know, whatever, four, six minutes, whenever EJ missed the front of that one and one, I'm like, this is a couple possession game. We're down two yeah. at one point. I'm like, yeah. okay. After battling back and being down, you know, 15. Now, Kyle Young getting hurt, obviously, that was a, a dagger to the chest. And I think that really exposed, like, when you don't have him out there just being an energy guy and rebounds, the passing, just all the intangible stuff that he does. That makes up a little bit for, like, not having that third score. And he's that a little. Zed provides a little bit of that. But just outside of Brandon and Liddell, and then, like, what Zed and Kyle could give you, like, who who's scoring buckets? Wheeler, I mean, he'll bomb a three every now and then, but like, there was nobody else that you looked at. Like, man, get the ball to that guy. Right. There's a few things about this basketball program that are obvious. Number one, they're not as talented as a lot of teams in the Big Ten. Just look at the rosters, and that's on Chris Holtman, right? He's the guy bringing in the talent. Number two, the players love Chris Holtman. Like, they fight every game. Mm-hmm. They 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 could have quit yesterday and, and said, "Hey, we're down 15. Let's just call it. This season's been." You know, nonstop run of bad luck. Or you could talk to them. Maybe it was like the the Timmy deal, like uh, his post game. I mean, <laughs> yeah. we don't give a beep, right? I mean, <laughs> and he's got getting power from the mustache. <laughs> I mean, yeah. They obviously care, uh, but then you have to just look at some. Joey Bronk played great in the last three yeah. weeks when Zed Key was out for the ankle issue, and didn't play a, a, a second in the in yeah. the two games in the tournament. And this. Decision by Holtman to just he just gets stuck in these rotations that don't make a lot of sense and uh, you know that's on him and I, there's a lot of changes that have to be made in this off season for the Buckeye basketball program I think the the start of that to me is the strength and conditioning program the Ohio State basketball strength and conditioning program is seriously lacking compared to the rest of the Big Ten need to bring in schlags is what people, you're saying. People, there's no one, there's no improvement. No one gets bigger. No one gets it's better. It's been that way since we were in school. I felt like. with the basketball team. What's well, different coach now? Too. Well, no doubt. And, and you know, you look at. I don't want to keep evoking the name of the team up north, but John Sanderson is Michigan's strength and conditioning coach. That's a guy who played at Ohio State, and and they're different. They they get stronger as games go on. Ohio developed State, here, mm, it's developed there. It, it's mm, that's one for basketball thing where you just wonder how you know how does a guy that played at Ohio State be the strength and conditioning coach 
up north when the Buckeye strength and conditioning program for years has seemed to be lacking in basketball. I mean, you give me those guys for two months in the summer. We'll get them ready. You heard it. Get some, we'll get them ready. Get We're some different rockets. striking machines in there. No, we, we could, <laughs> maybe they that. should. Jason, I mean, you said you you felt that way for years about that? Uh, yeah. I, I feel like yeah, even I, I don't want to throw anything at anybody, but throw you the, just get, didn't get feel a like, big hand you just didn't feel like you'd see guys come in as a freshman and they'd go out as a senior and it's like, where was they didn't physically the growth? Change. I mean, yeah, they didn't physically change. And you see, no, it wasn't necessarily that way when we were in school at, with football either. But when Mick got here, you start seeing, you know, the Josh Perry one yeah. jumps out to me. You take this is what he looked like as a yeah. freshman, and this is what he looks like now. Like, make it dude whoa. A, yeah. make it dude B, four years in between. Yeah, I feel like <laughs> basketball is always just like, all right, he looks almost the same, maybe has a little mustache now because he couldn't grow it when he first got here. <laughs> but, he does, you know, they don't look like they became men when they got out of the program. To be fair, I don't know if it's if it's just that much different anywhere else, but if you look at just the, the physical strength of guys around the league, look at – even uh, Wisconsin, look at Michigan yeah. State, Purdue. I mean, they, oh. they've got just different types of athletes. And I don't know if that's on Holtman in the recruiting. I don't know if it's the style of play. I don't know if it's the fact that Ohio State sometimes doesn't feel like a, a program that prioritizes basketball. Uh, you mean, so you say program, you mean a, like a school athletic that, department? Yeah, like, I mean, but clearly they spend a lot of money on it. They, they do, but clearly they're content with being mediocre. And that's that's that part. Pretty, I, that's, that's what the, that's one of the other parts that doesn't add up to me as we've talked about this too much over the last few weeks they built the new practice facility i don't think you're going to find many that are better than what ohio state has they're paying chris holtman as a top two top three coach in the big 10 and he's not living up to those results and now more than ever in the portal era and name image and likeness columbus and ohio state are going to have more to offer than virtually every other program in the big 10 and this argument that everyone wants to make well it's not a priority it's not they don't have the high standards or it's hard to recruit to ohio state because football is so important that's nonsense to me. You're, I'm comparing, forget about Duke, forget about North Carolina, Kansas, whatever. Head-to-head head with Michigan or your biggest rival. Michigan's not going out and signing the number one class in the country and one-and-done players left and right. And you want to set that aside for some reason? You shouldn't. But, and they've done it with two coaches. But Wisconsin or like Iowa or Purdue, that you shouldn't have the same expectations as those programs? I just, I cannot buy that. I know he's not going to get fired. I think people have... Got it in my mind that I'm saying Ohio State absolutely needed to do that with Holtman if he didn't win that game. This is purely about the contract extension and what the, the message it sends that this is good enough for their program. And I just, I don't believe that that's the case. And if other people are fine with that, I don't, that's cool. I don't care. Everyone gets their own opinion. I think they can do better. And if you don't agree with me, cool. Enjoy watching, you know, Milk toast basketball in front of yeah. eleven thousand people yeah. in well, the shot. Well, that's the thing, though. They got a you know, you know top five recruiting class coming in, so people are looking. Saying, All right, hey, we won in the you know the tournament this year. We got this big class coming in. Maybe we get Bryant to come back. Uh, you know, and then if maybe next year is that year where he gets over the hump of that you know, is the Sweet the, Sixteen that is into the thing this off season, right? Number one, like si- similar to Ryan Day's off season this this past few months. Chris Holtman has to make a decision. He's got to decide what's important and and if he's willing to change some things up that he's done. And yeah. he has to get Malachi Branham back into in for next season. That's obviously priority one. Yeah, how do you do how do you solidify that? I don't know. I mean you, you call up Urban Meyer and the foundation. You, you say, Bud, we need has, some allocation over here. He has to be back uh for the Buckeyes to have a chance to be better next year. But then you still have the issue of who replaces EJ Liddell. You're gonna have a bunch of young guys. Um it, EJ Liddell needs to replace EJ Liddell. Well, I, I mean, that's, I, I don't even disagree. I, I, don't I know how I, that math works. I'm not sure. Well, I mean, he's only he could come back, right? Yeah, yeah, but he's not coming. back. He's not coming back. No one knows that. But if you watch him this season, as good as he was, are you? Do you say that's a surefire NBA? Oh, he's not an NBA player. And, and is he? Hey, look at the jump he made from last year. That I feel like he's he got in better shape. He is. You know, he was a guy that he, he knew they were no, going to have to rely on him, so he. You know, carried those minutes. Athletically freaky enough to be yeah. a dominant. NBA Although player. you wouldn't know that by watching. I mean, everything yeah. I heard was how how high he jumps and how but this and that and the other. I'm like, am I watching you know, somebody yeah. different? I've seen great player. So Look at him Draymond elevate. Green. Yeah, <laughs> I've seen. I heard that so many Draymond. Times. Draymond Green is taller. He's insane. longer. He's longer. He's mm-hmm. an energy monster. There's things that he does that are different. Uh, and EJ, I understand that people. Hey, go get your money. And I'm not saying he should come back to Ohio State. I'm saying. I don't think long term his NBA future is as 
guaranteed yeah. is it mm-hmm. but some guys leave players. i mean you want to go play overseas and go make a million bucks a year i'm like yeah. dude go he, for he it. could do that at ohio state next year that's the beauty of NIL. is he yeah. making a million bucks at ohio state he could in theory he could i mean there's a lot of things in theory that could happen i'm talking the reality <laughs> I'm, of the situation even if it's half of that for next season well let's go to reality i mean is he going to be one of those guys that overseas pays a million dollars to come play i think he's probably yeah. good enough to get there he, he's uh, john debler made a lot of money playing overseas yeah. for long mm-hmm. all he did was shoot threes well, that's well, a fine skill. I'm, I'm just asking, what is the one thing that sets Liddell apart? I think that's Jay Z's question here. No, I mean, I don't even disagree. That I think that's what I'm saying. That I don't, I don't see a skill in his game that is so much better than his peers that makes you go, "That's a guaranteed NBA player for the next ten years." Like, no. it, to me, you know, Jay Sean Tate's in the NBA and playing great, but Jay Sean Tate's a hustle monster. Like, he's a freak. Yeah. <laughs> He's a freak, and I don't know that... Liddell, He's a freak athlete who plays really hard. Right. Yeah. And, and I don't know that that's in Liddell's future. So, I mean, if you're Ohio State, how do you not go to the table and say, look, you can be here... Oh, I know. Yeah, you can make some money. You can make you're not going to make a million dollars, but you can make some money and come back, be better next year again. Maybe you go out as a you know first-team All-American player of the year. Who knows? Yeah. But it's all about in, in the past. It was hey, you gotta go get paid right. because you're not. You have no chance of getting any money here right. in Columbus. Hey, well, come back for your senior year. You're gonna make some money. You're it, gonna live a decent life here in Columbus and, and see how it goes again next year. It's about priorities. Chris Holtman has to find his. Gene Smith has to find his, and the players like Liddell and Branham need to find theirs. And I guess yeah. ultimately that's why this offseason will be the one that matters. I, I I I'm I'm not in contact with Gene Smith, but I feel pretty confident saying that that contract extension that's been waiting for Holtman. I don't think he's going to find his desk in the, in this offseason. So I think it was I can't believe there was even one on the desk. Well, yeah. I think it was pressed there because Chris Holtman was of him tied leaving. to other jobs and expressing interest in that uh, potentially. Now those jobs aren't are being filled and I'm not sure what the market really is for Chris Holtman. That's that's why I, I never understood the contract extension discussion anyway mm-hmm. with three more years and no sweet 16s to show for it. He win yesterday. Give him whatever. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's a different I conversation. I don't think he should be fired. I, know, I don't like, think he. I think we all I don't agree think, with that. I don't think they will. I think it. it's more of a conversation. It, it could be more of a conversation yeah. than it is. I think it, it's a matter of what has to change. It's that Jim Harbaugh moment that he had two, mm. two off seasons ago. We're like, are you going to do this? Are you going to get it right? Because something is not right. Hustle Monster was my favorite Sum 41 well, song. That Huss, that's that's pretty impressive. <laughs> Classic. What's, um, what's that first verse? Uh, go ahead and sing. No, I, I can't remember. You wrote it. Hard. I mean, it, it doesn't take the talent. The reality is, though, is that there hasn't been. <laughs> JC remembers it. It doesn't take talent. Yeah. Yeah. Well, fair enough. Remember that? No. The, the sums. Three chords in the truth. Three chords in the truth. That's remarkable. <laughs> but uh, there hasn't been a defining moment. Like, there's no... There hasn't been a net cutting ceremony. There hasn't been a banner go up. Banners fly forever. So if you can point up there like Sweet 16, boom, 2019. Okay, well, that's something that has been achieved and is tangible that will be immortalized here. And there just hasn't been that to this point. Now, next year, you have a top five recruiting class. You throw Malachi Branham in there. I think you have a shot to be able to go do something, but you have to convert on it. And Austin made mm-hmm. a, a really cogent point on Twitter. A salient point? Yeah, mm. that also. Um, you know, people are like, oh, well, Thad Mata left him a bare cupboard. His mm. best year was with... Katie Bates D up and Jay Sean Tate. So it's sort of hard to point and say, well, he had But there was nothing in the pipeline though after that. That's why Thad ultimately lost. I, I under, well that's that's Thad's fault. <laughs> my counter to well, that's that why he was gone. <laughs> my counter to that, Bob, is that especially what I mentioned with the portal era and transfers, like college basketball. Even before that, college that. basketball is so much easier to flip than football. You're only talking about you know, a roster of 12 to 15, but a handful five of guys dudes. on you need, and one, you need, you need one or to two get, guys. You need to get one handful of dude. And you're ready to go. And it's and people, well, when they make that argument, they say, well, you know, Thad left it better. Well, the, the roster he inherited was the best one he had in terms of NBA talent. It's been five years. And it may there, maybe there weren't seniors behind that. But this is four years that Chris Holtman has mm. been here. Yeah. So there would have been seniors on this team, or there could have and should have been. So I don't know how that argument really stands up to any sort of close scrutiny. Uh, it, the time has been there, and the results haven't. That's... I don't think that they are a disaster and they're going to be fine with Chris Holtman. I'm not. That's all back to the standard conversation we're having. If you're going to elevate it, the standard is the standard. Their resolve is strong. But but if that's the standard, then you don't ever have to make a move. Like, he got to the tournament again. They got to get the second weekend. That's what I'm saying, Bob. We got to get the second weekend. It has to be next year. 
Yeah, that's some. And next year, if you get Malachi Brandon back and you pair him up with a really good recruiting class, the problem is I'm watching those guys out there, and you know, a guy like Michi Johnson, who I was excited about last year, and I'm like, I really didn't see any growth from right. him this year. Hmm. Still a freshman. I mean, he was a high school senior last year, right? Yeah, but you came in, so yeah, I. I, I I mean, agreed. Did it count for L? Now he did have a broken face all. He had a broken face all, all year. That's fine. Playing with that mask on, but yeah, fair enough. But you still got to remember, he's still a young kid. He's what, eighteen years old? Hey, you know who else was eighteen? LeBron James. Yeah. You know what he? Yeah. <laughs> young kid in the NBA. All right, perfect. Yeah. Like for yeah. like comparison. Well, yeah, you're right. If you, you, we could go across the landscape and look at freshmen and judge their impact and then you get the guys who are second year players like okay well yeah there should be natural jumps that are happening but some of that comes from dude on dude accountability in the weight room becoming a superior athlete mm. if you watch a guy like Jaden ivy at purdue and you look at the ohio state roster you just don't see anyone even close to the same that's yeah the same. that's and that's a mouthful uh and so are these mac and cheese mm. bites which on tuesday are hey, two how about that dollars bob what do we have here? Two so we have a, if you like mac and cheese, mm-hmm. but you don't like to use silverware, the mac and cheese bite is going to check the box for you. It is going to be delicious and gooey mac and cheese inside. Absolutely delicious and tremendous. It's going to be $2 all day long. Apparently, we have got the ships out of the bay. They have loaded up. It is the featured appetizer here at all your aerial roosters locations. What's the right sauce for the mac and cheese? Hot sauce. Bite. Hot sauce. Oh. There's no dipping sauce. Was oh, there some sour cream? What is it? I mean, ranch? Sour I mean, cream. Ranch is pretty good. But there's no need for it. They come with the sour cream. Sauce. You like to go with the hot sauce. But you're so Fried manly. mac and cheese is the elite appetizer of all appetizers. Mm. I think Mott's Sticks has Mott's something sticks, to say about yeah, that. Would probably, it's essentially the same, only better. Essentially the same? Yeah, it's, it's still it's still cheese better. fried. Uh, there's except, no pasta inside come, of a Mott's Stick. It comes, it, it comes in a handy bite-sized container. Uh, you you can get it, it all in one a bite. Thick candy you show. get it all in one bite. You don't have the thing with Mott sticks. Mott sticks are so inconsistent from place to place. Not like, at roosters. Not at roosters. Not at, roosters. Not at roosters, bud. They're always like, elite. The breading, the, how long they were in the fryer, three and a half minutes is pretty much where you want to be with that. Is that right? <laughs> you but, like they're cooking these up? No, I know. <laughs> I'm saying we should move on. We should <laughs> three, three and a half minutes in the fryer. <laughs> at the, what temperature? Three sixty five. Duh, 365. <laughs> Obviously. Obviously, Bob, well, you didn't most, know. Most Sorry. industry fryers are at 360 as the standard, but we'll go 365. Just give it a just little gets extra the, gets the cheese a little, little extra gold. They're there. resolving. Because that's the issue with my is if you get them undercooked, the inside, they're hard. Uh, why would you eat that? I'd rather just get a string cheese from the drawer in the, in the fridge. You know, <laughs> I appreciate that. That's wholly true. Do you have those in your fridge? Yeah, of course. Mm. Okay. I, yeah, I have a four and a half year old. We got tons of that. So, um, Nicole, Nicole is on spring break, so she can't verify any of this stuff. We just have industry expert Jeremy Birmingham. I forgot he was that. a hospital. I, you know, I always forget about that, Berm. Outside of scoping out high school parking lots to talk to <laughs> dudes, I forgot that you did. And writing food 2001 for- ska pop, pop, pop punk songs. Yes. I mean, and that- marrying Avril Lavigne. I love Avril Lavigne. Mm. My wife is a huge Avril Lavigne fan. Of course. Huh. Well. Seems like a prerequisite who, I mean, for this who, guy. Who was two weeks ago? I listened to one of her live concerts. They, I somehow stumbled on a station on XM that it's had actually it all. been one of the most. It was great. <laughs> Sat in my car and some live Avril. <laughs> well, I was driving like out to Millersburg. It was a long drive, so I was <laughs> off like a full hour and twenty minutes. Of the last two years since the pandemic started, like and, and we're both working from home a lot, hearing her music, and it's always Avril Lavigne or Jimmy Buffett, and I'm like, hey, <laughs> pretty <laughs> weird. Geez, combo. That that really is. What is it's going on up there? <laughs> have you ever have you ever mashed them together? I try to. Now a Jimmy Buffett Avril Lavigne like uh, duet would probably be bang. You know? What if what if, if Jimmy bang, bang. would would it be better if Jimmy Buffett covered Complicated or if Avril covered Pirate Looks at Forty? Probably the probably the latter. Pirate Looks at Forty is of course a great song, but Avril Lavigne didn't get to forty, unfortunately. According she's to still alive. <laughs> she no, oh, she's still, still alive. Chives. chives. We were on a road trip this season, and Chives was convinced. Was is he going like, full Rex said, Chapman? He went. Over here? Yeah, he, he went conspiracy told, theory. Avril's dead, and he was—he was not joking. He later tried to play it off. We're like, "What are you? you believe that?" Huh. And Chives is an, an Avril truther, so didn't think we'd get to that I point he was going today. Rex, Rex Chapman. <laughs> didn't he was think going she would come up today. Full Rex Chapman, though, who's one of you know Berm's favorites. He's, he's doing a great job, looking like Howie Mandel <laughs> on the set. This is the kind of uh, analysis you can only get 
on Letterman Live. It's brought to you by Roosters. And of course, it's a fun, very casual conversation. When we come back after this break and we eat some mac and cheese bites and some mozzarella sticks, I promise we're going to talk about football. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Everybody knows that Roosters is a fun, casual joint. But the truth is, it is so much more. It's a quick stop on the way home to sit back and unwind. It's a front row seat to the big game. It's a place where you will always find a friendly face and the home of wings so big you won't believe it. It's your family's other dinner table. So yeah, we're a lot of things to a lot of people. Roosters, a fun, casual joint. Precision engineering. Rigorous attention to detail. A Bryant Evolution heating system is so well designed, it's as much of a joy to install as it is to use. Good to go. For the dealer nearest you, visit Bryant.com. All right, welcome back into the Letterman Lounge as we roll along on Letterman Live, brought to you by Roosters Football. Back at it. Everybody's tanned, rested, rejuvenated, probably, Bob, from spring break. I thought those guys go on spring break, man. I hate to say that. Like, It'd be I, hard to do, wouldn't it? I, I, I never did. I mean, we, had, we started. Well, I mean, but having your practice and then taking the week off and then. Some Nick beautiful Nick patio like weather last week. They could have. Like I tell you. Uh, not, uh, well. Following not, these kids on social media, the Instagrams, the Snapchats, there were a lot of tropical vacations that yeah, were taken last week. I guess uh-huh. I just can't imagine doing it. They, they're they probably doing more of an elite vacation because they've got some. Yeah, it's not the pocket. old uh, drive down <laughs> with 10 people in the car and yeah, you know, one hotel room beach yeah Natty, stay right? at the holiday inn in panama city i mean that's yeah, they're like cabo now <laughs> yeah they probably do. oh yeah. yeah i have seen some and i know some of those guys i mean they they do it upright and so it's like more relaxed it's like a vacation that i would take hanging out <laughs> now sitting by the <laughs> as, as an adult, adult. Yeah, as an adult. <laughs> not <laughs> one that i would like to take where you wake up and you know you're drinking for 18 <laughs> of the 24 hours in the day and sleep the other six and yeah that's kind of what it is well you can't drink all day if you don't start before noon that's don't start in the morning. Good morning. Well, all right. Whatever. I mean, <laughs> both are true. As you're recapping the okay. night before, you start yeah. drinking then. That's Doc right. Tressel used to tell us one of the most yep. important <laughs> things have one to do is, is eating breakfast. And so with any elite breakfast is going to be maybe a Bailey's and coffee, mm. you know, maybe clue in there, whatever you like, bloody or Mary. mimosa, a bloody. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot Water of juice, options. a little vitamin C. But he went down. He went down to Georgia. All of our coaches did one year. And this is, was a big deal, especially when we were offset from the SEC. So we would go down during like our March time, you know, when we, because we didn't start spring ball until April. And they go watch at Georgia. They go out to Oklahoma with Stoops and check these people out. Offensive defensive sp- staffs would usually split and kind of friendly staffs that they knew they'd go kind of pick their brain on things. And Doc Tressel, Dr. Richard Tressel, the brother of head coach Jim Tressel at the time. The jump cut. He, re- he reported back to us that the number one thing that he saw the Georgia Bulldogs do was every morning they ate breakfast. Oh. All of them. Mm. And that was the going to be the key. That was it. That would be the mm. key. Didn't get that kind of insight here or anywhere mm. else in the Big Ten. Had to go to the SEC. To to well, because it just means more. It means more. It they means were, more. They were probably back then giving guys like the bagels with peanut butter when that was against, when the, against rules. the rules. Yeah. Yeah. Or maybe even plain a, bagels only. Plain bagels <laughs> only, or butter. Maybe or, a. We came back and told Jim Tressel, "Look, these guys are putting toppings on the bagels. Yeah, they actually get elite, toppings down there. An elite breakfast. We got to find a way. Top to bagel. To put something on the bagel. Got absolutely. Bagel. This is support from the u- university, the administration. How bad do you want it? Exactly. Might need a schmear on here. It just means more. We Georgia's got a schmear. Yeah, we didn't have that. So there you go. Difference maker. Okay. But anyway, uh, these guys yeah. are. So what do we think? <laughs> they're so, back. They're back, and they're they back go out. Now. They get to put on the full pads moving forward. That first two practices that we talked about two weeks ago, acclimation period. Mm. I wonder what you guys think the balance is. Time out. Can we talk about the semantic? Like the acclimation How period stupid it is. used to be like you would acclimate into playing. Yeah, and, into playing. And then it's take like, a week <laughs> off, then come back, and we're gonna hit the first day you're back. I mean, there's no like <laughs> it, the, the first two practices were meaningless. Yeah. There's no, like acclimation, like, like just hey, getting them out of the way almost. We need an acclim- Get those out of the way. We're banging heads uh, when we come we back. Need an acclimation period now. Yes. After, yeah. After spring break, coming back, and that was the point. Like, hey. 
Thursday, Friday yeah, would be acclimation. Good. Saturday would be like our full on hitting, and like you've worn your helmet now, you've done it. You go helmets, you go shoulder pads, days. helmets, and then yeah. you go full pads. Now it's like ah, Man. do that, and then hey, hop back, take a week off. And like I'm not saying that this is indictment on Ohio State. Everybody, Everybody does this stuff now, but I'm like, do we even need the acclimation period anymore yeah. if this is how we're going to operate it? Well, and you only have a limited number of days throughout the year that you're allowed to wear the full pads anyway because yeah. they've changed those rules dramatically. Oh, yeah. You have days and shoulder pads and, and shorts. You have the spider pads. You have just helmets only, walkthroughs. I mean, it's you have to keep a separate calendar just to make sure that you're wearing the right thing to practice each day. And I would dress of the day. The EQ, EQ the day. staff is earning their, That's right. earning their money. Make sure you got to put the right thing in every locker. Mm-hmm. As they go through these 13 practices, what is the balance, as we've talked so much about the defense and shoring up, teaching scheme, being better tacklers, fundamentals, all these things? How much do they need Bob, Jay-Z, to go live or tackle? Uh, I know Jim Knowles has already said a lot of what they can teach and get accomplished, they can do without going live. Mm-hmm. What We have to play football to get better at football. only way to get better at tackling is to actually practice tackling. I mean, that's uh, it's like saying, hey, I'm going to watch um, – I'm going to go watch Rick Barry shoot free throws, and then, ergo, I'm going to be the best free throw shooter around. I'm going to sit here and, like, go through this and just stand there and look at it, maybe even hold a basketball a little bit, just flip it up in the air, you know, get a few. Tackle the big donut, the big rolling donut. Yeah, you can tackle the big rolling donut, but I don't know a big rolling donut that you hand the ball off to in the backfield and you roll them out. Yeah, they're not not cutting. The The big rolling donut doesn't have the. Doesn't a lot of side to side. Great line A to B. Yes, he's not. (laughs) The COD is not great. The change of direction. He. He would not do well in the three cone or pro agility drill berm. So, <laughs> yeah. the rolling donut. Forty is all that matters. Forty is all that matters. How fast can you push the donut? <laughs> How, fast, <laughs> How fast can you push the donut? So they need to work on that. Mm. And frankly, it's it's not bad for your skill guys mm. to work on maybe breaking a tackle. Like, hey, here's a dude coming at me. Like, oh, you got my leg. Let me see if I can pull through this thing. And I'm not talking about having eight guys tackle one because that's where guys really get hurt. One on one tackling. As long as you don't have guys like twisting and ripping ankle, like, hey, once we have them, if the dude's like standing, hopping, trying to get out, he's probably going to get down soon because mm-hmm. the next guy is Somebody's coming, coming to, clean, to him clean you up. And so like in a one-on-one tackling drill, it's like, all right, I got him. It didn't look the greatest, but he, in a real game, that guy's making a business decision and understanding like, I don't want to be in the, I don't want to be the feeder out there for the T-Rex as I'm like mm-hmm. hopping around <laughs> and then three guys come in and smoke me because I can't move. But you need to practice it. And I think it's good for that to happen. I, in New England, it's the first place that I'd been that we did this where they were we would practice open field tackling during the regular season for like five minutes or ten minutes once a week. Just quick. Mm-hmm. Get a couple shots of it in there and it's good for everybody. And it's because you just never have time to do that stuff. And if you, it doesn't matter. And Bill's thing was, I can draw all this stuff up here. And we have an X for an O and do all this stuff. But eventually the X has to take the O to the ground. Mm-hmm. Or else... Oh, is running for a touchdown. So there you go. We can have all the coverage schemes and Leos and Jacks and, you know, adjusters and inverters and whatever the heck else. Position. Bandits, baby. Bandits. We're making up stuff. But at the end of the day, by hook or by crook, they've got to get to the ground or at least out of bounds. Right. One of those two things has to happen because the third option is not as a touchdown. Can you practice pushing someone out of bounds right now? Yeah, but that's – I don't know if that's really one to want to go. Push the donut out of bounds. Push the donut out of bounds. The donut goes down easy. <laughs> that's the – you and I can go out there and tackle the donut. I don't know. It's a little bigger than you think. I mean, it's it's an interesting spring for that though, right? Because the coaches are saying, these guys, they know how to tackle. We've been beat up. Our secondary, we've been playing with low numbers throughout the season. We don't want – we just want to get through spring healthy. And we're throwing a whole new defense in on guys, so we want them to understand what they're supposed to be doing because if they're out of position, they're not going to be able to tackle anybody anyway. So it's probably a fine line to walk there. I think more they're going to err on the side of being safe right? and just trying to get these guys through yeah. the season without any – through the spring without any stupid injuries that maybe could have been avoided. Yeah. And, you know, so that's a, that's that fine line they have to walk. I think it is important, but is it more important that these guys know exactly where they're supposed to be, different checks, different – all that – I think that's more important right now. So, I mean, I, w- I don't think – and I'm not advocating to go out every day. I and mean, we tackled just about every day in spring. <laughs> I mean, but I'm saying, like, listen, once a week, like, let's take four yeah. of the 15, five, like, a third. I mean, you got the spring game in there. So, four of the 14. And let's – let's. And I'm not saying – You can lock- make it your maze and blue period, right? Yeah. Hey, we're going to do some tackling drills here. Quarterbacks are doing footwork drills. You know, just yeah. little things that get forgotten 
throughout a season or whatever that because they're always worried about other things let's take these periods and try and go and you know get something in like that once a day or every other day usually spring ball is a a period of like heavy instruction and individual player development like yeah we're putting in a scheme but we also want to make sure that our players are getting better within the scheme so the little pieces that we move around can do more of what we ask them to do and so they'll work on quarterbacks they're throwing in the net and working Mm -hmm. on techniques it's not hey it's third down when they show this they're doing that and like just getting through all of these things everybody's like hey Let's work on our footwork. Let's work on this. Something that completely, as Jay-Z said, gets neglected yep. during the regular season. You get a little bit of it in camp, spring ball, because there's no game. I mean, no one no one loses a spring game. Every every team wins. And so it's you a winner-loser day. It is. And that is a winner-loser day. And you that have to walk home. Com- competing, that stuff is important. All that stuff is accurate. And you don't even have to do it the whole practice. Like, hey, got two periods today. These are going to be live. Like, guys, this is going to be intense. We're going to keep score. We're doing this. And this is how it's going to operate. So go compete. Understand the guy that you're tackling is your teammate. Understand, like, the guys you're hitting, like, we don't need any cheap shots. you got to learn to practice against each other. You need these guys in the fall. Yeah. <laughs> so, but just, no hey, heroes. be good. Go out there and try to put your best forward as if it was a real game. Berm, you missed the last couple shows when we talked about. I was writing a new song. I know you were. And that'll be out on, on iTunes. I was on tour. Yeah. Dropping soon. Yeah. Uh, congrats on the reunion. Thank you. By the way. Yeah. But. We talked about some guys that we were keeping an eye on. Now we've got the benefit for you of we've seen two practices. Yeah. I know you were writing and paying close attention to Cam Babb. Yeah. So you can either talk about him or some other guys that you were hoping for big springs or, or wanting to see. With Cameron, I mean, we'll just – that's a one-off. I mean, every single practice is important for him. You know, like every practice that he gets through is getting through it, is yeah. getting through it and getting and, out of the shower and every walking to the car, <laughs> and every, crossing the street, every getting out of, of those, bed. Every one of those will make him mentally more confident in, in, in what his body is doing. Mm-hmm. So that's why it's important for him. Uh, you know, as far as the, the defense goes, I mean, Tanner McAllister, him, him fitting in uh, the role that he can play. Cameron Brown just being out there. He's not going full speed, uh, which, again. At some point, these guys have to be able to just play football right. and, and stay on the field. But I think it's got to be Jordan Hancock. I think he's the difference maker on the defense. I, I think he'll be the guy opposite of Cam Brown on, on the first snap of the season. Um, so seeing someone like him step up is really the most important thing. They have to have a guy that they can count on at corner because I don't know that you're going to get a full season out of Cam Brown. So him and, and uh, J.K. Johnson have to be the guys that I think are the – the changers, is, you know, we have the adjuster, but these guys are the changers of the defense because a bit of a bold prediction, though, that you just dropped, uh, yeah, dropped I mean, out there. But the other side, starting over Denzel Burke. Denzel Burke. I, I, I think Jordan Hancock is going to be a superstar at Ohio State. I'm not questioning your your prediction. I'm just saying no, that. I mean, it kind of glossed over. It, it also, caught, yeah, I mean, Jay Z was trying to pick his also, golf off. I'm the also board. not ah, sure okay. that Cameron Brown will be out there. So maybe uh, maybe that's well. You I mean. you just said he's not going to be there for the full year. I mean, you've made that. I, I think that you'll see. There will be no Cam Brown slander on this show. Right. Uh, it's not slander. <laughs> uh, it's uh, I'm just talking about. Cams from St. Louis and their injury issues. Oh, okay. it's a Wait, from guy, guys with St. Louis from St. Louis have injury issues? Is that what you're? Uh, that you're going with? only Cams do. Only, <laughs> only Cams from St. Louis. That's an important. You only, need to make sure that only that only Cams from. You gotta tell me. Oh, can't tell me. <laughs> only Cam. Yeah, stop recruiting kids hey, this from kid's St. Louis. Is Cam, he's from St. Louis. What are you doing? Only Cam. Uh, huh. uh, obviously, Denzel Burke is a guy who's going to start, uh, but the Buckeyes well, do their rotation. So, who's the guy? that is going to be there every down. And I think Jordan Hancock is a guy that is going to be a superstar for Ohio State. I think it has to start now. Well, yeah, that's big. I mean, I know the coaches think a lot of him. Yeah, his name They're has been thrown, been thrown and, around. And the reality is they'll rotate those guys through. I mean, you're going to need mm-hmm. to be able to see everybody. You need three or four corners. I mean, that's just with as many snaps as you have guys yeah. play. And I know Jordan Hancock, you know, he should be up for it and hopefully be able to go out there and have the season we expect. Quick question, though, with the NIL stuff. I know there's some limitations on things that people are allowed to endorse. <laughs> are you allowed to have an OnlyFans account? Only cams. I, I don't see how they could stop that. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I didn't know. Like, you can't endorse now, liquor, I mean, like alcohol and some different things. But Bob, why don't you look into that and get back to us? <laughs> I think there would be restrictions on the type of content maybe that you could produce. It's, I mean, it's but, your, your person. Hmm. I mean, 
It's whatever you're kind of comfortable. You, what are you, you doing all just... that? What are you doing all that work in the weight room for? Well, for all the student athletes <laughs> at Ohio State. So you can profit off of your TikTok, your Instagram, your Twitter. What's the difference? Why not? So if only cams. That's all you gotta gets, do is just go. Gets fired up. Fire one up and say, "Pay me two dollars." I'm, I'm talking now, this. Conceivably, you could put the same content on your onlycam.com. I'm talking about the kind that you can you, only get. You'd have a, on only You'd cams. have to subscribe, and that's of course the difference as opposed to Twitter. And but it, you know, but you can subscribe to those too, and oh. get and tw- get Twitter tips. Yeah, as long I, as you're approving. I've never received one of those. I I don't even. I don't know I've how. I've never heard of a Twitter. My account, Bob gets. By the way, Twitter's to... today is the birthday of Twitter. My account does. Sixteen have years old, two thousand six. Yeah. Uh, my account does have the option for it. Send it away. It should be put down. Really? Yeah, put it down. Put them all down. I wish it. Would I don't be... know what I would do if I did. I'd be only cams as well. Here. What's a Twitter tip? Like people can pay you for your tweets. Really? If you go to my Twitter profile, it's like, hey, I loved your tweet, Berm. I'm going to give you dollars. If you go to my no, if you go oh, to I my, see Berm and Austin are out for road beers. I'm going to send them twenty dollars. Pull up my Twitter profile and you'll see there's a little dollar sign next to my name. You can just don't click it. Don't tip him. I don't know You're why. Get the tweets Did you have free. to set that up? I don't think so. You must have clicked monetizing it at some point. That's the only way that would have got there. I, no one's ever given me one. So why not? Maybe you just have a bank account. Just money. the Twitter. Just you the Twitter check tip. Check that out. <laughs> That's all Berm's looking for. A little bit. Just a tip. A little bit. Just um, offensively, I, yeah. I, I I think that the important the guy that I really think changes the offense is Julian Fleming, mm. and I know that it seems like maybe when you have Jackson Smith and Jigba and you have Marvin Harrison and Emeka Ibuka, oh who cares if Fleming plays or not? But I I don't agree with that. I think he's a guy that physically is very different and can do a lot of different things. He's a big guy, helps in the run game with the blocking on the outside. He's really good at that. Um, and I think it's just when you're talking about having a fully armed and operational Death Star, like you need to have all of those guys available. Fully death armed star. and operational Death Star. That's what that offense should be, right? How, it should be a planet killer. How much off do you think I am? Somebody asked us uh, on the message board at LettermanRow.com, like, why is Julian Fleming such a big deal? Why are people making uh, a fuss out of the injuries and getting him in the rotation when they have these other people? Like, who does he compare to? And I think back to the glimpse in that first half of the 2020 Big Ten title game where it seemed like he was really starting mm-hmm. to come on. And Bob, Jay-Z, I, I thought there were like some elements of what Michael Thomas was doing in college. Now, I'm not suggesting that he's going to go break the NFL mm-hmm. record for receptions or, or anything, but in terms of the well, Drew Brees big, retired, the so big frame. Big. Yeah, right. <laughs> in terms of a, a big frame with more athleticism than, than you might think, mm-hmm. the ability to go run an intermediate route and a slant and – bring that football down consistently. How important is it like, to have a guy who can catch 108-yard passes? You know what I mean? Like, what? That's huge. I think people, I don't know. It's it's easy to look at Jaden Bauer and say, well, he's going to be the home run threat. He fits into that. And, you know, Marvin Harrison, you know that he's a complete package. And Jackson does all these other things and is so versatile. And I guess maybe there must be some disconnect. Like, you don't know what Julian Fleming mm-hmm. So does. you've heard about him you a lot. You don't know what he does. Unfortunately, well, I, like, he hasn't been able no, to go out there. Or there's no like, archetype, maybe, to, to say so, what he... Let me ask you this, Berm. What was, wasn't was Fleming the highest rated receiver of that crew? Yes, but he shouldn't have been. Well, no, I, I mean, <laughs> I mean we, can, we can dive into that. I, he shouldn't have been. He just, the athletically, he's the most different. He's the most gifted of that group. So, But he also played in basically a wing T offense in high school. They threw the ball to mm. one guy on the field, and it was to Julian Fleming, and he was just so much better than everyone else at that level of Pennsylvania high school football that he had six thousand yards receiving in his career because Gosh, every every catch sense. every catch would be a thirty five yard touchdown because <laughs> that's he didn't a, stop, yeah because stopped. if you run the wing T really well, they have to make a decision. Yes, yeah. can we <laughs> yeah. can we stop ten with we're nine? We're going one out there, <laughs> and we're putting everybody else in the box. <laughs> this is what well, that's what uh, Georgia that's what Georgia Tech did because like, what's the comp for that? I'm like. Uh, the last year of Calvin, Calvin Johnson, Johnson and then Demarius Thomas, like yeah. they were really good at running this, the triple. <laughs> and so it's literally, Hey, you're a quarterback. You don't have to be good at math. Is yeah. the middle guy yeah. over here yeah. or is he, Can he there? get there or not? <laughs> if he can't, if he can't, you throw it, throw it over there. <laughs> like, that's literally the math on it. Like, Hey, at any point in time, yeah. if you feel like we can go get this outside of maybe a fourth and one where yeah. we really need to go, <laughs> throw it up to that dude. Nobody so watch tape on, Ju- on Julian Fleming versus Jackson Smith and Jigba who in the same class, both five stars. Nobody thought Julian Fleming was a more college ready receiver than Jackson Smith and Jigba. Okay. So, like at all. But the reason I ask that is because I do think there is a level for perception of program and recruiting to make sure that when you have guys who come in who are really highly touted, make sure that those guys continue to perform and produce 
and leave as highly touted dudes. So you're like, hey, we brought in a five star. We made him a first or second round draft pick. You have to. That's that's how your program wins. Because if you take five star athletes and they don't become high draft picks, eventually those athletes stop going to your school and go to Alabama where they know they may never get better, but they're also going to be a first round pick. And, and that's what Bama does better than anybody. They take guys who are great players and they they're the same player as a as a college freshman as they are as a college junior when they leave. They don't get better. They also get their butts kicked and, and end up flaming out in the NFL generally pretty early because they're so worn down and beaten up. But they get there and they get a lot of money. Hmm. So what does that mean for my comparison? Uh, my comparison would be David Boston. I mean, if you want to go, oh, like, if you want to go a little older. Mm, yeah. The the type of physicality that Julian Fleming can bring when you're talking about a guy who can go out there and catch an 11, 12 yard hitch and get hands out, catch the ball, go down, get a first down. He's but he's also a four, three, five guy. Like he's a freak athlete. So you just have to find ways to get him into the mix. And the more guys you can rotate in and roll in there, the better, the better it is. I, I don't think Ohio State wants to have Jackson Smith and Jigwood have to catch 120 passes this year. <clears throat> now, could he? Sure. Would he be able to in the offense? Yeah. But is that ideal? Hmm. Not for Brian Hartline. If you were trying to recruit other receivers and say, hey, we're, we we have six deep and everyone can play. You don't want to go out there and say, "Well, we have six deep, but only one guy catches the ball." Like that's well, not- you're going to need those guys to come come to play because teams are going to see Jackson. And say, we got to try and stop this. I mean, we can't let him have 12 catches on right. us, you know. So these other guys are going to have to they're going to have to you know be ready to go because they're going to their number is going to be called upon. He's not going to be able to get as many balls. I would think. Right. I would think teams are going to try and take him away after that Rose Bowl performance, you know, and what he did last year, knowing that he's the guy that's back. I imagine early on in the season they are going to focus on him and you're you're going to make these young guys beat you, right? I think the fascinating thing for Ohio State and that idea, because you would think coming into this season teams would be able to look at Jackson Smith and Jigwood and scheme up a way to slow him down. But because well, of Mecca Abuka, called two guys. Here, yeah. But because of Mecca Abuka and Marvin Harrison are now known quantities or known entities around mm-hmm. college football yeah. because of the Rose Bowl, yeah. I think it actually slows down the, the thought process for coaches to say, hey, let's do that. You don't want to – yeah, but one game versus what he did towards you know that that well, last season. The, the you're gonna say let's stop what Ohio him. State does with the receivers and what Brian Hart. Yeah, doing, no I doubt. I, I understand, to, and I agree with you. I think we won't miss a step, but developed here they got to try and stop. B I A. I really like the counter that Ohio State showed in the Rose Bowl with Jackson Smith and Jigba, and I asked him about that two weeks ago with coming out of the backfield mm-hmm. and uh, getting the, creating these matchups, and if teams are gonna try to double them, which you assume that they will. Even with Marvin Harrison, even with mm-hmm. the Ekbuka, Julian Fleming, you know it's going to be hard for teams to devote that that attention to him. So maybe some of the slot stuff remains. Maybe it's the backfield, and you're creating these difficult matchups and decisions for teams. Like you want to yeah. put a corner inside the box. Like, we got three other guys we, we brought in. He's in the backfield oh, now. Yeah. Good luck. It yeah. changes the math because you can't play man. Because if you do that, then you're like, I'm going to, like you said, I'm having my corner, like, what, stand right beside my linebacker? Yeah. That corner doesn't know what the heck's going on. Like, they don't work on run fits. Like, (laughs) you know, and so if you you flare, I'm like, all right, so you have guys, like, crossing and running into each other. So then it's like, all right, we driving. Now you got to be in zone. And so now the quarterback knows, okay, there's no corner in here to guard this guy. They can do some sort of some, maybe some man zone hybrid things. But you know what you're going to kind of get for the most part. And the other element is, like, Jackson Smith and Jake was a big enough guy. Him and Emeka Ibuka are, like, thick enough and powerful enough dudes. Run through some time. But you could Debo Samuel that a little mm-hmm. bit. We're like, hey, um, we could actually have a viable running threat. Now, we don't want to do it, you know, every time, 10 times a game. But, like, we can hand the ball to this dude. He might be able to go get us seven yards. And now their coaches are really screwed because, all right, you've got a couple guys in the backfield. You motion out Henderson. Okay, it's obviously going to be a pass. Well, that's not the case anymore. <laughs> just because we have a wide receiver back there with us. Kind of like what we did with Teddy my senior yeah. year. And we basically just – it's like a pitch. You got him out here. He's in the he's in the backfield. With the if questions you see numbers, end, you get it to him real quick and yeah. go get, you know, seven with, yards. With the questions at tight end, in my – like if I was creating this offense on Madden football, like I would have Jackson in the backfield with Travion most of the time and have – Fleming and Abuka. You have enough Harrison other guys, right? At wide receiver and just have the five offensive linemen, no tight end, and have those six guys. Wait, you're going to besmirch yeah. Kevin Wilson's position group like that? and no, just he's a play caller. He can. I'm giving him more. 
credit, more credit. He's got other responsibilities. Find not a way. That, not that responsibility. Find a way. Not yet. Find a way. You don't think Roy, play, he, Roy's going to make some play, plays? Let it be the play designer. I, Ber, Berm's low on Royer. I'm not. I, 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 that's not true. I just don't like his hair. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like his hair. The point is. Something about your face. He would have been a five star. There are so many. <laughs> if weapons. he would have talked to Berm during his recruitment, he would have been. Uh, Jaden uh, Ballard never did either. Some of these kids mm, just don't care for the media, and I appreciate massive. that about them. Um, <laughs> the The reality is, there's so many weapons on this offense that you just have to find ways to to mix it all in there, right? Mix it up. Then you still have to get Evan Pryor involved. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> what a re- and and, <laughs> and Mayan Williams. I mean, there's there's a lot of dudes. A lot of mouths. tons of dudes. A lot of dudes. Not a lot of uh, spots to go out there. Not a lot of balls to go around. That's that's right. Um, let's leave it there before <laughs> it gets too far off the rails this week. At Letterman Live, it is brought to you by Roosters. Uh, full coverage coming all week of Ohio State back on the football field Tuesday, Pro Day Wednesday, Ooh. Thursday practice, Saturday practice. Buckeyes putting on the pads and getting after Poppin'. it. Popping. Basketball season is over. For the Buckeyes. You guys know who is and not running on Wednesday? I'm Have they running. put that out? I think. Is that this? Is that? It's Wednesday. It's yeah. Wednesday. It's Cardale Wednesday. Friday. He said he's throwing, he's throwing to the guys. Bob's going to have uh, the stopwatch out there. Getting the 40 time yeah. for everybody. Me running the 40, maybe. Oh. Ooh. What do you think you'd post? Don't call, don't call I mean, it a listen, comeback. There's fr- I mean, free agency still going on. I mean, I think that there might be a move. Mm. That's, hey, Troy thought that one year. I'd pop into Pro Day and throw the football around. Yeah. Didn't work out. But. Hmm. Bob, what do you think you'd run on Wednesday? Oh, goodness. Without trained up, I could probably be a high 4.7, low 4.8. Give me some training. I think I could still get down to a low 4.7. Maybe a high 4.6, but that'd be tough. I'm lighter now than I was before, so there's a shot. You could fly. Well, right. Wind aided. We've seen you in the Woody training. I thought you were getting ready for pro. Yeah, but <laughs> <laughs> I'm not down doing explosive like takeoffs <laughs> and training like that anymore. <laughs> Mick was working on, uh, you know, the firing out of the blocks. Yeah, I train fire those glutes. Day. I do enough that if I need to go run some half gasters with those guys, they 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 know. When they know would forgotten. anything in your life happen where I, I, if, if I had to go if, run if with not, these guys, if like not, why would you have to go like, run half gasters with to make sure that they understand what the standard <laughs> is the standard? Remember, fair, fair. You don't have to be faster than the lion. He just has to be faster than you. Faster, yeah. slowest gazelle. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> That's a sum forty one song. Yeah. Uh, thanks for joining us as always Banger. a fun <laughs> casual conversation at roosters <sighs> appetizer tuesday this week world famous mac and cheese bites you won't want to miss them they're two dollars at your uh neighborhood roosters that's jay-z bob berm i'm austin ward we will see you next week for letterman live it's presented by roosters it's a fun casual joint